Hello everybody, uh, this is Mr. Fink doing a little grammar review, hopefully, about parts of speech. So hopefully everybody was able to access this uh, on my website and through YouTube, so hopefully there's no technical issues. So parts of speech, right? Hopefully a review, have been doing this since you were little. So first thing we're going to talk about is verbs, right? The king of all words, so I like to call them. And verbs are actually broken down into three different parts, three different types of verbs. There are action verbs, there are linking verbs, and there are helping verbs. We're going to talk about each one. First, we have action verbs. Okay? When you get to action verbs, definition basically is it the action verb tells what somebody is doing. Okay? Are they jumping? Are they running? Are they flying? Who knows what they're doing? Whatever it is, that's the verb. Okay, our example, very simply, we have Joe ate cornflakes for breakfast, and the italicized word ate is what Joe did. Okay, pretty easy. Next, we go on to linking verbs. A little bit uh, more difficult, a little more, a little harder to kind of uh, wrap your ha hands around it. Um, linking verbs tell what somebody or something is. Okay, and they usually stand by themselves. So, when you were younger you saw really short sentences and you said well I, I don't know what the action verb is here because there is no action because the example is the roses are pink it just is that way they're not actually doing anything okay so that would be uh, one example um, maybe in middle school or in elementary school your teachers referred to them as Amazar verbs uh, and that's what that, f that word is there in uh, quotation marks and those types of verbs that are linking verbs are the words am, is, are, get it, am, is, are, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, will be, any of those to be verbs uh, in the past, present, or future are linking verbs. Then we move on to helping verbs. And helping verbs are the third type and then what they do is they work with the main verb in the sentence to show complicated tenses or maybe time and when helping verbs go with the main verb both of them together are called the verb phrase an example of this might be when I arrived he was drinking a soda okay so was drinking is the verb phrase was is the helping verb and drinking would be the action verb because that's what the person is doing okay so you need to have both of them if I ever asked you on a test or quiz or homework to identify what the verb is, it would be was drinking. You need to actually identify both of those verbs, uh, verbs excuse me, the helping and the action verb. Um, some exa another example might be, and there's a couple here, he will have been drinking lemonade all afternoon. Could just be one word, could be a series of words like will have been uh, along with the action verb of drinking. Okay, so that's verbs. Moving on, talk about nouns. Okay, again, pretty simple, been learning about it for a while. Nouns, a person, a place, a thing, or an idea. And people usually forget that idea, usually remember the first three person, place, or thing, but don't forget about that idea. Okay, so any person, mom, dad, sister, brother, the president, uh, anyone who you come across in your life. Place could be, again, a common place, like house, could be street, uh, or it could be a, uh, a proper place, like again, I used the example of president, white house, um, something like that. Thing could literally be anything in the entire world, and then idea would be stuff like uh, words like love or hate. Um, those don't really fit into the first three, so they are ideas. As I mentioned before, we have common and proper nouns. Common uh, are very common words, like I said, like street, um, but proper would be the name of your street. So some examples would be something like this, mom or President Obama. Well, mom is common, President Obama is proper because he is the president, so we gotta address him formally. Uh, town versus Newtown. Well, they're both places, Newtown is a specific place. Band versus the Beatles. Okay, those again, again would be things, but the Beatles is obviously more specific. And then uh, the idea of love. There really isn't any proper nouns that you would have with ideas, so just common. Then we have pronouns. Okay, a pronoun is kind of an offshoot of a noun. And what a pronoun does is it replaces a noun. And it makes your sentences a little less cumbersome and less repetitive, a little less wordy. And that's what we want to try to do as writers, is try to get right to the point as quickly as we can. And you guys usually do this normally in everyday talking, but um, maybe not so much in your writing. What you're going to do is, 
you know, use some of these examples here. He, she, it, them, they, we, us, you, each, some, I, me, him, and her, any of those, plus there are a few others as well that would be pronouns, okay? So, you know, you establish who the person is you're talking about first, you know, again, my brother, and then from then on, you can just call him he or use him to refer to your brother. Uh, last thing I want to mention about pronouns is that there are also possessive pronouns, okay? So instead of saying, you know, uh, Tim's bike, you could say his bike, okay? So those are some other ones that are listed uh, on the screen for you right now, like my, mine, his, her, hers, your, our, their, etc. And they would function not as pronouns, but as adjectives, okay? We're going to get to adjectives a little bit later on in this uh, presentation, okay? Moving on, we got conjunctions. And conjunctions are words that you're actually going to come across quite often in your writing and in your reading. Okay, There are different types of conjunctions. One is called a coordinating conjunction. And a lot of people remember this uh, little useful tool for helping you to remember the, the um, seven conjunctions. The word is fanboys. And each letter stands for one of the conjunctions. So you have for, and, nor, b, b for but, or, yet, and so. And what they do is they would, uh, when you have two shorter sentences and you want to make one longer sentence, use a coordi coordinating conjunction in the middle to kind of put them together and uh, make a, a better sentence. Second type of conjunction is called subordinating. So we have coordinating, subordinating. And some examples of those are words like after, although, as, because, before, if, since, that, though, until, unless, when, where and while. Okay, and what again they're doing is they're kind of telling you, you know, that while this one thing might be going on, there's something else that's going on. Or since this one thing has happened, something else is going to happen. Or if this one thing is going to happen, this next thing is going to happen. So it kind of again it combines two different ideas. This first idea with the second idea that you're going to have later on in the sentence. And the last thing it says that they basically join things together or show a relationship between two things. Like I mentioned before, this thing happens after the first thing or before the first thing or during the first thing. Those are all subordinating conjunctions. And let me just say now, I know we're going on, it's about this minute, this video has been going on for about seven minutes or so, seven and a half minutes. If at any time you need to pause, step away, use the bathroom, obviously please do that. It's only gonna be about maybe two or three more minutes, but. Obviously, feel free to do that. We're going to talk about interjections, though. Interjections, words like, oh, wow, no, and yes, gosh, which isn't really used too much anymore, except for maybe your grandmother or grandfather. But those would be uh, examples of interjections. And usually, they are the first or maybe even the only word in a sentence. And usually, but not always, they would end with an exclamation point. Okay, really simple, kind of try to catch your attention. Um, show the enthusiasm of the person speaking. That one's an easy one. Next, we have prepositions. This seems to be a, a kind of a sticking point for a lot of students, and people don't really understand preposition. Um, you may have heard these little tips from different teachers, so I kind of compiled them all together here. Prepositions could be what a cat can do with a chair, or what an airplane might do with a cloud, or what a worm can do with an apple. And you're going to see what I mean, and maybe this is starting to jog your memory already uh, as we go along here. So words like in, under, beside, near, by, with, over, on, into, off, from, around, to, through, of, and many, many more things. So what I mean by um, the, the first bullet point on the slide is, you know, for instance, you can say a cat can be in the chair. The airplane can be in the cloud. The worm can be in the apple. Um, the cat can be under the chair. Airplane can be under the cloud. The worm can be under the apple. So any of these words that show kind of location uh, would be prepositions. But again, don't just be hung up on just location because words like excuse me, of would be an example of one, which really doesn't show location, but it is a type of preposition. A few more here, we have adjectives. That's the next thing. And adjectives are going to modify or describe nouns. Okay, so describing how a noun is. Okay, so some examples are colors, numbers, maybe possessives, like again, uh, Jim's car. Uh, or articles, words like a, an, and the. All of those things would fall into this category of adjectives. And if you want a little trick, um, a good way to think of that is they answer these three questions. How many of something? So like I said, numbers. What kind is something? Or which one? 
So words like that are actually adjectives, that book, okay, because you're telling me which book uh, that, I, uh, that you are talking about. And finally, our last thing we have on here are adverbs. Adverbs, again, are kind of throw people off sometimes, but they're just basically adjectives, but instead of modifying nouns, adverbs are modifying verbs. Okay, and what they do is they're going to modify or describe verbs, also adjectives and other adverbs. And that's kind of why people get thrown off by this, is because they have so many different functions. Um, they would answer the questions how, when, or how much. And again, this is all with verbs. How you're doing something. You're doing something quickly, slowly. Um, are you doing it, um, you know, when, when might you be doing it? Are you doing it before something? Are you doing it after something? So that would be another way that adverbs could be used. And again, m a lot of times, but not always, the um, words are going to have L-Y at the end of the word to make an adverb. And again, the word not, this is, there's always an exception in the English language, and the last thing is that the word not uh, would be an adverb as well because it's, it's kind of, you know, describing... Uh, the, the verb or adjective and saying it's not this thing, it's, it's something else. Um, and that brings us to the end here. So if you have any questions, maybe you want to rewatch the video or rewatch a certain section of the video. Um, but after this, uh, please uh, do the five exercises that will be listed on the webpage. Thanks again. Bye.